how unlikely do you think life is on Earth? So when you look, when you study other planets and you study the contents of other planets, does that give you a perspective on um, the origin of life on Earth? Which again is full of mystery in itself. Not the evolution, but the origin. The first springing to life. Like from, from nothing to life. From the basic ingredients to life. And I guess another way of asking it is how unique are we? Yeah, it's a great question, and it's one that just scientifically we don't have an answer to. We don't even know how many times life evolved on Earth, if it was only once or if it happened independently a thousand times in different places. Uh, we don't know whether it's happened anywhere else in the universe, although it, it feels absurd to believe that we are the only life that evolved in the entire universe, but it's conceivable. We just have just no real information. We don't understand really how life came about in the first place on Earth. I mean, so if you look at the Drake equation that tries to estimate how many alien civilizations are out there, planets have a big part to play in that equation. If you were to bet money uh, in terms of the odds of uh, origins of life on Earth, I mean, this all has to do with how special and unique is Earth what you land in terms of the number of civilizations has to do with how unique the rare earth hypothesis is. How rare and special is earth? How rare and special is the solar system? Like if you had to bet all your money on a on a completely unscientific question. Well, no, actually, it's actually rigorously scientific. We just don't know a lot of things in that equation. There's a lot of mysteries about that. And it's slowly becoming better and better understood in terms of exoplanets, in terms of how many solar systems are out there where there's planets, there are Earth-like planets. It's getting better and better understood. What's your sense from that perspective, um, how many alien civilizations are out there? So Zero or one you're plus? You're right that the equation is is being better understood, but you're really only talking about the first three parameters in the equation or something. You know, how many stars are there? How many planets per star? And then we're just barely scratching the surface of what fraction of those planets might be habitable. The rest of the terms in the equation are like, how likely is life to evolve right. given habitable conditions? How likely is it to survive? All these things. Um there are all these huge unknowns. Actually, I, I remember when I first saw that equation, I think I was, I think it was my first year of college, and I thought, this is ridiculous. This is <laughs> A, common sense that didn't need to give, give a name, yeah. you know, um, and B, just a bunch of unknowns. It's like putting our ignorance together in one equation. But I, I've actually, now I understand this equation, you know, it's not something we will ever necessarily have the answer to. It's It just gives us a framework for having the exact conversation we're having right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how it was intended in the first place when it was was put into writing was to, to give people a language to communicate about the factors that go into the potential for aliens to be out there and for us to find them. Um, I, I would put money on there being aliens. I would not put money on us having definitive evidence of them in my lifetime. Well, definitive is a funny, is a funny <laughs> word. Because uh, my sense is, this is the saddest part for me, is my sense in terms of intelligent alien civilizations, I feel like we're so, we're so self-obsessed <laughs> that we literally would not be able to detect them, even when they're like in front of us. Like, like trees could be aliens, but just their intelligence could be um, realized on a scale, on a time scale or physical scale that we're not appreciating. Like trees could be way more intelligent than us. I don't know, it's just a dumb example. It could be rocks, could rock, or it could be things like, uh, oh, this, I love this, this is Dawkins memes. It could be that ideas are the, the like ideas we have like, where do ideas come from? Where do thoughts come from? Maybe thoughts are the aliens, or maybe thoughts is the actual mechanisms of communication in uh, physics, right? So it's just like, we think of thoughts as something that springs up from neurons firing. Where the hell do they come from? And now, 
what about consciousness? Maybe consciousness is the communication. And it, it sounds like ridiculous, but like we're so self-centered on this uh, space-time communication in physical space using like written language, like spoken with audio <laughs> on a time scale that's very specific, on a physical scale that's very specific. Uh, so so I, I, I tend to think that... Uh, but bacteria will probably recognize, like like moving organisms will probably recognize. But when that forms itself into intelligence, most likely it'll be robots of some kind, because we won't be meeting the origins. We'll be meeting the creations of those intelligences. Mm -hmm. We just would not be able to uh, to appreciate it, and that's the saddest thing to me. That uh, we, we yeah we we're, not, we're too dumb. <laughs> to see aliens <laughs> uh like we're too we kind of think like look at the progress of science we've accomplished so much the sad thing it could be that we're just like in the first 0.0001 percent of understanding anything it's humbling i okay. hope that's true because i that. feel like we're very ignorant as a species and i hope that our current level of knowledge only represents the 0.001% of what we will someday achieve. That actually feels optimistic to me. <laughs> well, that I feel like that's easier for us to comprehend in the space of biology and not as easy to comprehend in the space of physics, for example, because we have a sense that like we have it like if you if you talk to theoretical physicists, they have a sense that we understand the basic laws that form the nature of reality of our universe. But it, so there's much more comp like physicists are much more confident. <laughs> Biologists are like, uh, <laughs> this is a squishy mess. We're doing our best. Uh, physicists, but I would be, it'd be fascinating to see if physicists themselves would also be humble by their being like, what the hell is dark matter and dark energy? What, what the hell is the, n not just the origin of the, not just the big bang, but, uh, everything that happened since the Big Bang. A lot of things that happened since the Big Bang, we have no ideas about except basic models of physics. Right, what or what the happened hell's... before the Big Bang. What? Ha yeah, yeah, what happened before. Well, or what's happening inside the black hole. Why is there a black hole at the center of our galaxy? Can somebody answer this? A supermassive black hole? Nobody knows how it started. And they seem to be like in the middle of all galaxies. Um, so that could be a portal for aliens to communicate through consciousness. Okay. Um, all right, back to planets. <laughs> How? Um, what's your favorite outside of Earth? What's your favorite planet or moon? Maybe outside of the ones. Well, first, have we talked about it already? Or, and then, if we did mention it, what's the one outside of that? Oh gosh, I have to come up with another favorite that's not Io. Oh, Io is the favorite. Oh, absolutely. Why is Io the favorite? I mean, basically everything I've I've already said. It's just such a an amazing and unique object um but on i guess a personal note it's probably the object that made me become a planetary scientist it's the first thing in the solar system that really deeply captured my interest um and when i started my phd i wanted to be an astrophysicist working on things like galaxy evolution um, and sort of slowly, I had done some projects in the solar system, but IO was the thing that like really caught me into doing solar system science. Okay, let's let's leave uh, moons aside. What's your favorite planet? It sounds like you like moons better than planets, so it's uh... that's accurate. Uh, but the planets are are fascinating. I think you know I find the planets in the solar system really fascinating. What I like about the moons is that they there's so much less that is known. There's still a lot more discovery space and the questions that we can ask are, are still the, the bigger questions. Gotcha. Um, which, you know, I and maybe I'm being unfair to the planets because we're still trying to understand things like, was there ever life on Mars? And that is a huge question and one that we've sent numerous robots to Mars to try to answer. So maybe I'm being unfair to the planets, but <laughs> but there is certainly quite a bit more information uh, that we have about the planets than the moons. But I mean, Venus is is a fascinating object. So I like the objects that 
lie at the extremes. I think that if we can make a, a sort of theory or, or like I've been saying, framework for understanding planets and moons that can incorporate even the most extreme ones, then, you know, those are the things that really test your theory and test your understanding. And so they, they've always really fascinated me, not so much the nice habitable places like Earth, but these extreme places like Venus that have... Um, sulfuric acid clouds and just incredibly hot and dense surfaces. And Venus, of course, I, I love volcanism for some reason. And, and Venus has, probably has volcanic activity, definitely has in their recent past, maybe has ongoing today. 